I was living in a smallish town last year with an interesting design. The front of the houses faced each other, but instead of streets, the front doors led to paths that formed something akin to a park walkway. Back of the houses opened on a horseshoe type of street. One area was in the middle of a couple apartment buildings, so it had a playground, a basketball court, and all of that jazz. I went for a walk around one in the morning to smoke a joint, so I go to the area with the court, sit on a bench, and light one up. After maybe three minutes of smoking, I look a bit to my left and about 20 yards away, directly under a streetlight, are two very tall shapes. They're standing perfectly still, with no discernible features, and they were black. Not like a shadow person or a morph suit, but Vanta black. They're sucking the light and the warmth in. I know they're staring at me. I could feel it. I could feel the hate, the absolute certainty that if they were to come any closer, my life would more likely never be right again. Now, it takes quite a fair bit to make me afraid, but what went through me was pure, primal fear. I've seen ghosts by the dozen, and I've never been afraid. This was like staring the devil in the face and feeling the pure, unadulterated hatred radiating off of him. It took me ten minutes of just being frozen in fear before I could stand up and book it out of there and all in the time I had my eyes on them. There were no movement of any kind, no sound, no indication they were alive. I've not seen that since, but it got me looking up shadow people and the like, and I guess according to the people with more experience and knowledge, there weren't shadow people. Apparently, due to their height, the darkness they were made of, and the feelings I got from them, they were demonic in origin. So that's my little story from hell. I see shadow people in my peripheral vision all the time, and have done so for the majority of my life. It intensified when I started living with my boyfriend. I never mentioned anything about them, but my boyfriend randomly mentioned seeing weird things around the house. He would tell me he'd see someone standing there out of the corner of his eye, but when he looked, it was gone. One of the very consistent shadow people I see is one that glides past our window at nighttime. I saw it all the time and never mentioned it to my boyfriend. After I'd been living with him for a while, I noticed him quickly turning his head to look at the window at night while we were watching TV. Eventually, he told me he keeps on seeing something passed by the window, but it didn't make any noise, since our window was open at the time, and we had lots of dry leaves and twigs in that part of the yard. It's not headlights creating shadows. Outside of the window will be completely dark. Something even darker just passes through. I've only seen two, and neither was on a flat surface. While driving around, Looking at abandoned houses, some friends and I drove past an occupied house from which both of them got a sinister vibe. I went back several times to show other friends, and the first two involved in these. The house is about 40 feet back from the street, and the yard has a lot of low, scrubby bushes. The first time, we pull the T-turn in front, and a person-shaped shadow flat back and unreflective, walked through our headlight beams about 10 feet in front of us, in front of some bushes and behind others. Our headlights reflecting off the house showed us the figure. We knew how far away it was by its size in relation to the house and it being in the middle of the shrubs, which came up to just below its knees. Second time going by, there was a boat and a truck parked side by side next to the house, with the floodlight on the house shining right at them. This time, the figure walked in front of the truck and boat, towards the house, but upon reaching it, either disappeared or walked through the side of the house. 
On later visits there, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. Basically, for years, one shadow person, which seemed male in retrospect, used to stand by my mom's bed and essentially would force me to go sleep. He would interrupt me reading books by basically being so distracting and then eventually intimidating. I had to leave the light on or even pull the covers over my head just to fall asleep. His shape was kind of an adult-sized oval with diffused edges and he wouldn't really move. He only really ever occupied two spots next to the bed. Once, when I was maybe four, I saw several very clear human shadows on the wall. They looked like people waiting for a subway train or maybe guests at a museum milling about in front of a painting. I think this is not a unique phenomenon. I feel like I've read similar experiences, if anybody knows. They seemed to be watching my family and I. We were all sleeping at my grandparents and they had a small house so we had set up a bed of blankets and pillows on the living room floor. My dad and brother were already asleep. I sat upright just staring at them, watching us. They seemed very casual and relaxed, walked around and talked to each other. They seemed very much like silhouettes of living humans. I also got the sense that they didn't know I could see them. Anyway, I eventually got up and found my mom in the kitchen. She asked why I was still awake and I told her I was watching the people. What people? The people on the wall? What? There's people on the wall watching us. What? No, no, you didn't see that. Go lie down. My mom had gotten freaked out. Not a person, but most recently I got to see a ghost cat. I was walking toward my bedroom in the dimly lit darkness and I see this small, football-like shadow near the ground kind of bounced past my feet and ahead of me, kind of like a playful cat. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Left, right, and left. After the initial surprise and confusion, it left me absolutely delighted. Cutest ghost ever. I recall a dream I had where I was outside during the night on my old childhood street. The road was lit up from the streetlights in the usual orange color, and in my dream, I saw tons of shadow people walking on the other side of the street from where I was on the sidewalk, and all I could do to tell myself was to act normal, as if there was nothing out of the ordinary. I remember seeing them literally everywhere, but they didn't notice me or do anything, and all I could see was shadows that resembled human figures. I saw a shadow person in my great aunt's house when I was about 8 years old. All of us were outside saying goodbye to each other when I looked up into a second story window which was a bedroom and saw a shadow figure that was turned to the side. The shadow quickly moved to the left as if it was sucked in that direction. It was like the movement was being led by the shadow's chest, if that makes any sense. It was really freaky. And when I thought of the layout of the house, the shadow would have been moving into a closet. I've seen them for as long as I could remember. I had one that was constant when I was a kid, to the point I would try to feed them. My mom has stories of watching me drop raisins in midair trying to feed someone, and getting really frustrated and yelling that if they weren't going to even try, I wasn't going to waste my raisins. In high school, we moved and the house there seemed to be riddled with them. My friends saw one in the middle of the night sitting on the foot of my bed, just staring at her. Someone else saw one go down our hallway towards my room. My sister and I called him Sergeant Pepper because it looked like he had a wide-brimmed hat and there was always the smell of fresh ground black pepper when we would see him. I have a photo somewhere of my dog staring at a bright orange orb. My dad saw a woman in white on Christmas in that house. Another friend saw a little boy in our living room playing with blocks who of course was gone when she came to get me. 
there was a peeping ghost at that house. Always was seen looking in my sister's window. She would stand there and watch it while I ran outside and she just said it would turn its head when it heard me coming. Then, just vanish. We had a fenced-in yard and dog. It wasn't human. There was a lot of other things that happened with no evidence of shadow people involved in that house. Now that I've moved, I see them mostly at a distance, most often in our parking lot, and half the time I just assume it's a trick of the light, until my boyfriend says he just saw someone duck down behind a car. I was walking out my parents' back door, and I turned my head slightly and saw the door open with a shadow move through and run down the stairs to my right. I 100% thought my brother ran down for a beer in the basement. I had to go down and check after he didn't answer, and no one was there. I know it sounds lame, but I saw it in the right 50% of my vision, not my peripheral. It was around 4 feet tall, amorphous, but in a spiky way. Best description is the ICP logo with no axe, or like a person drawn like a jolteon with long slender endings for legs and arms. For those that aren't familiar with what a Jolteon is, a Jolteon is a Pokemon which you can google J-O-L-T-E-O-N, Jolteon. Later that night, the soap and lotion containers next to the sink swept themselves off the counter on their own. I recreated the move I made a dozen times to confirm I didn't push them. Nothing before or after this night. I don't know what to think of it other than I saw it and I don't know what to do with the information now. I was about 8 years old at the time, sleeping in bunk beds. I'm on top, my sister below. I woke up and looked toward my door and saw what looked like a witch shape, pointy hat, pointy nose, clawed fingers. Almost exactly like the wicked witch from the Wizard of Oz. Shirley Temple Black version. It creeped toward my bed in a smooth, sliding fashion, until it got to the little ladder. I was a bit scared and unsure what to do. I had been clenching my wicked E. Warwick stuffed bear and felt bolstered to act. I held Wicket by his legs and swung at the shadow's head, forcefully saying, Go away! And it did. Just sort of, gone. No swirly mist or anything. It just stopped being there. Never saw it again. I attribute seeing this shadow to the mental and violent physical abuse my mother had started inflicting on me and my sister at the time. I also think I developed a fear of absolute darkness at this age. I always feel like I'm being watched if I know I'm alone and can't see anything due to no light. Four years ago, I was experimenting with astral projection, and I almost succeeded from the first try, and other paranormal stuff like contacting spirits, Ouija boards, etc. Until one night, I woke up. I would presume it was around 2 to 4 a.m. to see what I can barely describe as a burning shadow, like a black fire. A while ago, I was re-watching the 2013 remake of The Evil Dead, and this drawing from the movie reminded me of it. But anyway, the second I saw it, I lost the ability to breathe. I remember that I started kicking while gasping heavily for air as it was choking me. Then, I passed out. But weirdly enough, when I woke up the next day, I was confused. I was thinking, what the hell happened last night? I couldn't remember it at first, but then I remembered it immediately. It was weird. Maybe something more happened that night, but needless to say, I never experimented with that again since. First time I was 10 years old, I woke up in the middle of the night and looked at my door and there was a shadow person standing there in the hallway. I used to sleep with the door open and I could clearly see the outline of it. It was static though. The outline was clear but shifted like there was an interference in what I was seeing. I could tell I was being watched and looked at, 
but there was no facial features, just a black mass in the shape of a person. The figure darted to the left of the doorframe and entered the living room. I could hear its footsteps, oddly enough. It came back, then stopped in my doorway again before going down the hall towards my parents' room. I got up to look and of course nothing. I sleep with my door closed now. I never saw it again in that house. I heard it though, walking through the house many times. It wasn't until I moved into my current place that I saw them again. This time, much more frequently. I see them every few weeks or so now. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. We simply coexist. Once on vacation with my family, I woke up in the middle of the night for some reason and I hear someone at the door. The resort rooms were in a motel style where you were outside before you went in. The bed I was in was closest to the door and I was on the edge of the bed near it. I watched as the door handle started to jiggle a little and I didn't know what to think. I looked behind me and saw each one of my family members in bed asleep. I knew I was awake and I knew it was not one of them. The door started to open and I just stared. A black figure started gliding toward me slowly. It became right to the edge of the bed in front of me and reached its arms out to me. I just stared up at it terrified and told me, come with me. I didn't move or say anything. I just kept staring. It then started to move backwards and then I started shaking my sister next to me aggressively, saying, Do you see it? Do you see that? And I kept looking back at it while trying to wake her up. Right as she woke up, it disappeared into a dark corner. It still scares me to think about it. I was on a hometown vacation with my mom and granny. What the hell on earth was woken me up in the middle of the night? The light was killed, and then I sensed something weird. I checked that my mom and granny were still sleeping in nets while someone or something stood in front of the edge of my bed. It was a pitch black entity. It put me on a negative state of frightening. I couldn't do a single movement until it came towards me, and then I screamed out, waking everybody up. They put on the light and see nothing. Now my mom was pissed off and blame that one of my imaginary friends since I used to be an imaginative kid. But I swear it's real, not a nightmare. I don't know if it matters, but I live in the corner of all my neighboring townhouses. It's a two-story house, and I have a yard and a parking parallel to my yard. One half of the house is not attached to anything. The other side is a neighboring one-story house. I can clearly see the parking lot 15 yards away from my bedroom window, so I'm super close to my vehicle. July 2017, on a Monday, I was taking a shower in Miami, Florida, in my townhouse. I could hear a TV novella, kind of like the Spanish programming, or family feud with lots of cheering and talking. I don't ever watch novellas, so I look over my balcony after I dry myself off and all the lights are off. At first, I thought it was my dad or my brother because we are roommates in a three bedroom, but I was alone. I just went back in my room and played piano. Tuesday, I heard the TV show cheerings again, but now, followed by footsteps going up or down the stairs, I couldn't tell. I get out wet and pray somebody is home. No one is home, though all the lights are off and my TV's off downstairs. So I go in my room and seclude myself and play video games again. Wednesday, I hear the same as yesterday. I run all the way downstairs and grab my sharp $100 kitchen knife, run through each room looking for some intruder. I check everything except the attic in my dad's bedroom because it's tiny and frankly, there's no ladder. I go in my room set my alarm for work and my blinds are wide open so I could see my black Cadillac Escalade. I swear on my sister's life, 
I see a trench-coated fedora-wearing man near my car, but not touching it. And at first, I don't think anything paranormal. I thought it was a neighbor walking by because of how close the houses are, and the street lamp is pretty bright. But then I notice them not moving. So I begin to think they are looking inside of my car, trying to case it and steal something. But I get closer to the window and notice its shoulders aren't facing towards my car. It's facing towards me and standing unnaturally still. I dial my girl with the phone still in hand and keep staring at it to make sure I'm not hallucinating. I look away and look back, but it's still there. I explain to her, Babe, I think someone is trying to steal from my car, but they're not moving. It feels very eerie. She says to make sure all my doors are locked in case they are trying to break into my place. But why are they wearing a trench coat? It's humid as hell in Florida. You can literally sweat outside at nighttime just being naked. I look at the clock and realize I have been staring at someone standing still for two entire minutes. 120 seconds. I go downstairs, check every door again. I have an even bigger window downstairs facing my parking lot, but I don't see anybody standing by my car. I look at my oven and notice it's around 10 and either my brother or dad will get home soon. So I tell that to my girlfriend, run upstairs and lock my door with my knife in my room. I leave every light in my house on at this point. I don't see the Fedora user by my caddy anymore, and I do feel relief, but stress. So I sit down, blast my speakers, and start playing games. I pause my music and continue speaking to my girl, and tell her that, Babe, people say that you can't be a pussy in front of ghosts. Supposedly, they feed off fear, and if I continue to be scared of them, they will. In the middle of me saying, they will feed off my fear. I could feel a cold finger or object run up my spine from the crack of my behind up to my neck, very slowly. If I could guesstimate, it would be 15 seconds to travel, and it was as if something super cold like a finger sitting in ice was touching me from the inside of my body. As the 15 seconds pass while it's running up my spine, I start hearing a loud pitch getting louder and louder. My speakers are muted, by the way, so it wasn't coming from them. As it finally reaches my neck, I feel a chill come down on my body like I have never before. I'm from Florida, but I've been in the snow before, and that was colder and stiffer than freezing temperatures. Then my book bag on my bed goes flying at the window that looks out towards my Cadillac. I turn my head with both hands on my piano and my head hugging my shoulder because I'm on the phone with my girl and see most of the shutter closed by something hitting it. I peek on the side of the bed and see my book bag upside down and fear comes over my body like a warm blanket. I run out of the room in boxers and a tank top, struggling to grab pants. So I frustratingly just grab the blanket and run outside barefooted on the phone, still sitting in the table between my house and my car and waited for an hour for my family to get home. The aftermath was my family laughing at me, followed by jokes from them being in my underwear. Aside from the jokes, my dad's side is involved in Santeria, so my dad immediately took my aunt's house to grab sage, a spanta murto from the plant they have in their backyard, and Santeria chalk. We sage down the house. Our family psychic told us to draw crosses on the inside and outside of every type of doorway, no matter if it's a closet leading nowhere, or even my attic. The type of chalk they use in Santeria is made out of chicken eggs. I don't know if that information matters, but I'll just leave it in here. We got 10 vases or so, filled them up with a cuff and a half of water each, separated an even amount of false daisy evenly in all the vases and added in a vase in each room, including the bathrooms. Espanta Murto means scare the dead, and people use it to basically detect if spirits are in the house without EMF meters. We left them in each room, 
went to bed that Wednesday, and on Thursday, all the plants were alive, except my brother's room. It was completely wilted. To me and my dad, it makes sense because a week prior, he fought with my dad and he had been looking for a job for four months, and my dad wanted him to help with rent, so he would always put off interviews, and my dad eventually got fed up that week prior and told him he needs to leave or get a job. They both screamed at each other, and he ended up talking about how he's 23 and doesn't know what he wants to do in life, and he's been looking up different graphic designing or logo creation jobs for people so he wouldn't have to work at McDonald's, and his girlfriend he broke up with him in early 2017 still had him depressed, and he was telling my dad he felt like killing himself, and then fell into my dad's arms so my dad started crying as well. They both sat down and made a plan on finding a job, which he eventually did. But I say this because there was a lot of negative energy every time he would come home. He was secluded in that room, and it turned out that that room failed the false daisy test. We kept all the flowers, only replacing my brother's room, and it stayed alive normally. From then on, I've never felt a presence near me when I was home and alone. All game show sounds and footsteps has ceased, for now. I want to astral project eventually, but at least now I'm wary and will try to control the fear they give me for the faithful week.